The idea of this talk is to make an introduction to containers on OpenStack. Uh, I will show you also in the end um, a short demo about how it is possible to create a cluster on, a, on, a pub, on an OpenStack tenant. Uh, I will not show you how to install uh, the tool for, for managing cluster that is Rancher. But if you're interested in the installation, you can leave the, your email here in the, at the end of the talk, and I will send you documentation about that. We don't have time to see the installation. And I will not show you how containers actually run on the tenant, but if you're interested in this, there will be a talk in the afternoon, um, always by Binario Etico, which I represent. And in that talk, we, you will see containers running. In this talk, you will, you will only see a little bit of containers, containers orchestration, orchestration engines, and finally, how to create a cluster on OpenStack. So that's the agenda of the talk. Some definitions about containers, very basic. I hope to layer down some common vocabulary and clear definitions uh, to be used in, in the rest of the talks. There will be another one very interesting about Kubernetes uh, in, in the afternoon. And, uh, and then we get to, to containers ecosystem. Where do containers live? And how it is possible to install container orchestration engines on OpenStack, plus some, some um, words about projects that in OpenStack deal with containers. And finally, we will see how operators and users can run containers on OpenStack because you know there, there there are two two perspectives here, and you will see how how this is done. Finally, the rancher demo. Okay. When you talk about containers and you find documentation on the internet, you always find this sentence by Mark Collier, chief operation officer of the OpenStack Foundation. Basically, he says that the success of OpenStack is due to that the fact that it is agnostic that the agnosticism is the success of OpenStack. This means that it can be used with virtual machines, containers, bare metal, and something that we already don't know there will be in the future. So there's no problem because OpenStack don't deal with one technology only, it's open to technologies, and it's agnostic to technologies. Um, indeed, containers um, gained popularity lately, in the last years. Uh, this means that standards are still being formed, so it's um, the moment to get into the process of forming the standards. The tool sets are relatively new, sometimes are difficult to use, uh, even if lately some workarounds are, are um, you can find uh, you can find on the internet. Documentation could be better. Um, anyway, the idea is to use container on for production on OpenStack. And OpenStack treat containers as first-class resources. Okay, that's important to say. Uh, a, a little bit of history. In 1982, CH root was probably the first container. Uh, it, very rudimental, not sophisticated, lacking of um, copy and write quotas, limitation on I/O on the on the CPU. And then there are some more. Uh, a bit more sophisticated technology, containers technologies during the years until 2008 when Lexi, Linux containers, was issued. And that, that's a, the, the time when finally user space tools are uh, given to users to wrap a CH routine um, using the, the kernel features of name spacings and C groups. So containers is um, a space to run applications that is isolated and possible. The usual picture that you see comparing virtual machines and containers, virtual machines, uh, you can have whatever kernel you want. You can have a guest operating system running on a host operating system thanks to an hypervisor that um, virtualizes resources. And in, on the contrary, containers uh, share the host operating system kernel. This, this can be regarded as a limitation, and indeed it is a limitation, but as you will see, this is an advantage when we come to uh, lightness of the image to instantiate the containers. But it's all about sharing resources, all with the same trend. So two, two types of containers, system containers or operating system containers, 
where an entire system, including operating system, application, and services, can be run uh, inside a container, and that, that's the case of Lexi, for example. Application containers, completely different thing. They are used to bundle and run applications. Hmm? That's the way people use it. People should use it. And you know that with application containers, you can do microservices, meaning that you can break down and isolate parts of the applications. Uh, and this uh, makes much more granular um, uh, the scaling, the management, and the configuration. Since it is not a full operating system, it is very light. We're talking about megabytes versus gigabytes uh, of virtual machines. Um, it is not a, rep a replacement for virtualization, for virtual machines. It is not a, replace for a replacement for configuration management. It helps configuration management. And the concept of container image is the one that was introduced by Docker in 2014, and that, that, that was the killer uh, feature. Uh, basically, you can snapshot a container's file system, and then you can um, layer after layers declare what are the bits that are needed to, um, uh, to have um, the, the, the container you want to deploy, starting from the parent container. Okay? So benefits. Lightweight, we said. This means that we have less processing, we consume less, less ROM, we consume less storage, and you have small chunks of data going around, which means less bandwidth. It is portable, you can run it on any hardware. So you run a container, create an app in itself, snapshot it, bring it to another hardware, to another virtual machine, and it will work. Uh, speed, uh, since we don't have hypervisor, um, we can make a direct access to kernel features, and this, uh, this is very good for, for speed. Um, on the contrary, when you, when you have an hypervisor, operations are virtualized and you need more time. So efficiency is the, the, the big advantage, which means that you can have a lot of more workloads on the same hardware. And very quickly, so seconds versus minutes. Okay, these are containers. Now let's go to where do container lives. Um, if you have this proliferation of computer units around um, and you don't use a platform for monitoring, management, orchestration, these containers can be left around, can be just, you know, uh, forgotten. Um, on the contrary, there are tools that are, uh, are called container orchestration engines in OpenStack. And these are the three most famous. All, all of them are supported. Docker, Kubernetes, and Apache Mesos. We know that Docker is a complete tool set uh, <clears throat> for, for containers. You have the Docker Compose, Docker Machine, and you have the Docker Swarm that is the native clustering um, platform for, uh, for containers. Kubernetes is able to schedule launching nodes in a cluster, uh, the containers, and actively manage these workloads so that uh, the user requirements are matched. And Apache Mesos, finally, applications are um, conceptualized as jobs and tasks. And then the, 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 the thing is to schedule and run this job and tasks using Maroton. So these are the, the three most famous, uh, not, not the only one. Uh, so the, it's a work in progress. Standards are not, uh, are not are under development. And in 2015, the Open Container Initiative was born. 21, 21 companies uh, said, OK, let's say something about standards. Docker provided the container format uh, and the runtime, run C. OpenStack made a commitment to, so that tools like this, Docker, Kubernetes, can work fine within OpenStack. All, all of the organization are working towards the direction of making it easier and convenient to use container orchestration engine. OK. Um, in OpenStack, well, uh, containers are only a part of a much bigger system. Hypervisor are only, are only a part of a much bigger system. Bare metal is a part of a much bigger system. OpenStack provides services such as security, isolation, management, monitoring, storage, networking, all these services can be given to containers, to virtual machines, to physical hardware. And so containers are just a complement to existing technologies. That brings about some benefits. Hmm? And um, so we have much more flexibility if we have a new, um, <clears throat> art, if we have a new, a new concept, a new way of using resources such as containers. And uh, the, the thing is that, 
among this flexibility, we have to use to choose the right technology. Okay, um, so on OpenStack, you can, um, uh, as we said, you can run containers. You can run containers on bare, on bare metals and virtual machines. We say containers is not a virtual machine, so it needs to be run within a virtual machine. Uh, so basically, virtual machine is about compute resources. Virtual machines, compute resources, and then containers is for application deployment. That's the two main um, um, uh, use of, of these technologies. They must be used together. Hmm? Uh, and if I use them together within OpenStack, I, I have an all-in-one solution. I don't need to have a separate containers-only server. I can do that in OpenStack. We will see um, how in a minute. Uh, people perceive containers uh, as an advantage for deployment application, which is very true, and it's very convenient. But in my opinion, the big thing, at least from an OpenStack perspective, of having containers um, is to improve utilization. 30% is the usual utilization within data centers. We can do better than this. With containers, we can do that, because quickly and in a granular way, we can scale up and down clusters. Um, so there's also the concept of density improvement. Uh, we we can uh, use less virtual machines per server, so we can have an older hardware, a, a lower performing hardware, and still having a lot of containers um, uh, deployed on top of it. Of it. Uh, so uh, we can use, for example, fewer physical server uh, or smaller virtual vir um, smaller cloud instances. We can use bare metal. We can use bare metal. This is possible in OpenStack. Pantheon, which delivers uh, 100,000 Drupal and WordPress sites on one, well, more than 1 million containers, use this system. They have an OpenStack environment, so they use the, the APIs to manage virtual machine and bare, man, and bare metal and their containers all in one, okay, on, on a single solution. And now look in, we can use different infrastructure, no problem. We can change infrastructure. So, so uh, since uh, the containers abstract the application uh, plane, we can, uh, we can change whenever we want. We do not lock in customers. We can do smooth transition to and from. You want to change from VMware or, I don't know, Proxmox to OpenStack, you can do it. You, are, you, you want to change again and go to another OpenStack um, provider, you can do it. You want to go back to VMware, you can do it. Okay. Um, just to make things a little bit more complicated, I told you that containers are not a replacement for virtual machines, but they can actually be used as uh, virtual machines are used in OpenStack. When we get to operating system containers, only in that case. So why is that? Because if we use libvirt, that is, you know, the, the tools, the API, and the daemon for running um, cloud instances, well, virtual machines, with with uh, with libvirt, we can we can use KVM, then VMware, vSphere, Hyper-V, and we can use also Lexi. So in this particular case, we can use uh, containers as we use virtual machines. So we have a network connection. We can SSH into it. We can put applications over there. We can use image and templating for creating that, and etc. This can be done, for example, for improving bare metal performance or for doing a, a fleet of identical or different distros with little overhead. Okay, now, uh, talking about how uh, containers... Um, containers orchestration engines can be used on top of OpenStack, we have to introduce the Magnum, Pro, the Magnum project. Uh, that is container as a service on OpenStack. Basically, very, very simple. As always in OpenStack, everything is very simple. Uh, <clears throat> we, have, we have Nova here instantiating the resources. We have said that we, it can instantiate containers, it can instantiate virtual machines. True, ironic, bare metal can be put into the game. With Glance, we have images that can be used uh, for installing those resources. With Neutron, we have the networking, and you know that HIT is the orchestrator 
Okay, with heat you can orchestrate all these resources. Well, Magnum simply connects to heat and asks for some resources and reserve these resources for the container orchestration engine. So uh, there is the concept of Bay. Bay is a group of resources reserved for a cluster to be created, and you have Docker Swarm Bays. Kubernetes base and, Bes and Mesos base very easily. There you can then use the APIs of OpenStack and of Magnum together with the API of Docker and the API of Kubernetes. All in one, you don't need a separate system. Hmm? And that's possible if you run your own cloud, private cloud. If you are an operator, that's a very good option to offer to your customers. Now, uh, just to mention that there are other projects that deal with containers in OpenStack, but they are, you know, completely out of, out of scope for us. Let's say, let's talk about that. Colla, for example, what is it? It allows to deploy OpenStack and so to have a, the, the control plane of, open, of, of OpenStack dynamically deployed. And each OpenStack service runs on a container. So it's OpenStack on containers. Out of, out of scope for us. And Murano, which is a catalog for packaged applications. Among these applications, there is Kubernetes, single tenant installation of, of Kubernetes. But uh, it's more interesting for other applications. So these are two main two projects that deal with containers, but out of, out of scope for us. So let's come back to Magnum uh, and say that, OK, if you are an operator, you can do it. But uh, it, it is not yet very common in public cloud. Hmm? Uh, so if you ask to your cloud provider, can you please install Magnum for me? Probably he will ask, no. <laughs> or, or rather he will ask, well, we do not support Magnum already, which is fair enough. Uh, they are maybe experimenting and they will support Magnum eventually. But what if you want to use it now and you are not an operator, so you have an account on a public cloud, you are a user of OpenStack and you want to install a, um, um, containers clusters. You can do that in different ways. It is not so easy, as I said, because tools are not really <coughs> um, mature and the documentation could be better. Uh, you can do it with Ansible, for example. Um, but there is a way that I will show you that is using Rancher. Um, that is very convenient because it's quite easy. The installation is quite straightforward, especially if you do it with Terraform, one of the tools that can be used to orchestrate uh, resources, something similar to Ansible, say. Uh, and then you can have, you, you, you can have uh, Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, and Apache Mesos course running on a public cloud for you. So, uh, it's a container management uh, platform. It is not a container orchestration engine. It includes a container orchestration engine, which is called Kettle. And when you install Rancher, Kettle is the default container orchestration engine. And it works pretty well. But they know that there are other container orchestration engines that are more famous. And so if you want, you can instantiate new environments. That's how they call it, new environments. Uh, and you can have Kubernetes, the Docker Swarm, Mesos, and others. And you can have this across multiple clouds. So you can choose what is the, the system for orchestrating, and you can choose what is your infrastructure. It can be Amazon Web Services, it can be um, uh, Azure, Azure, it can be OpenStack, it can be a custom, no problem. Um, so it's, uh, it's a very interesting tool for these reasons, and um, you will see another, an additional benefit of using Rancher is that the Kubernetes installation is quite easy, <laughs> which is if you, have, if you try to install Kubernetes at least once in your life, you've seen it, you know, you need some time, you, to take some time to make that. Um, I was able to install Kubernetes in five, ten minutes using uh, using Rancher, so this is really uh, something that you know I, I want to show you. So let's have a look at some demos I prepared for you, and um, you know I prepared directly the video as the demo effects with me is uh, very powerful. 
So, you know, just to avoid troubles. <laughs> okay, so basically, um, it's a um, 2x two, two uh, speed video. First of all, you have the, the master node. Well, yeah, that's too, <laughs> too fast. Uh, Okay, the, fr the first thing to, to, to do is to create, in this case, three nodes for the cluster, plus one node, that is the, the Rancher master node, where the uh, Rancher is installed. Um, so the, the nodes have to be prepared to become cattle um, cluster-enabled nodes. Basically, you have to set the security groups and you have to install Docker inside and a few, more, a few more things. That's why it's better to use a tool like Terraform to create these nodes. Otherwise, you have to do it by hand. Um, okay, so that's the infrastructure. It's based on a, on a public cloud uh, tenant. Uh, so as I said, there are these four machines, uh, three nodes and a master. Okay, and then here is the last. Uh, you know, when you install, when you when you install um, Rancher, you get this summary in the end. Uh, you take the URL of the place where the dashboard is. You cut and you cut and you, you copy and paste it on your browser, and Rancher is pretty f um, ready to be used. You have to activate the access control, local access control. You can use, as you've seen, also other access control method over there, Git, uh, GitHub, and, and others. But you know, local access is okay. So it means that the user is, uh, is locally defined. Okay, once you have created your user, um, you have to f create your first cluster. So uh, you have to tell Rancher where to find the APIs, and, and then again, you go to the summary of the installation, you copy and paste uh, the, the IP address, and then you say, okay, add the host. You want to add the host, so you take the public, the public IP of the host here, okay? And then you, as you, you have to, to put it over there, and here a command is prepared for you for installing the agent, Rancher agent, through Docker. You press this button, copy the, the command, and then you just SSH into the machine, and you paste the command over there, and Docker starts to, um, to run containers based on specific images. Okay, this way, this uh, node will become a, a, a node of the cluster that we want to, to build it. And three nodes in total, that's the first one. And then you get to the second one, and you will see that. That's the first node. And you see in the, in the picture that uh, all, all the services that are running on, on that node. <clears throat> yeah. Let's see what's happening now. Probably the second, no, yes, you know, there was a mistake here, you know, I couldn't bother doing the video. <laughs> and and then, I, I, then you add the second node, the same procedure, okay? You put here the address, just copy and paste, and, and you're done. Okay, once all the agents will be installed on the nodes, they will be seen by the interface, and they will be ready for using. And so it, in this way, you can, you can have uh, a kettle cluster working in a few minutes five, ten minutes, and you have over there um, your, your, your nodes ready, ready to be used in the cluster. And then you can imagine inside the dashboard you have all the different tools that are needed to do monitoring, look at logs, uh, see the health uh, status uh, uh, of, of the single containers and everything, okay? Okay, that's a cluster, kettle, that is the default of Rancher. What if I now want to install Kubernetes? I can make that within the same platform, and so as you will see, you will be able to use both of them, Kettle Cluster, Kubernetes Cluster, possibly Docker Swarm Cluster, within the same, the same infrastructure. And i show you another video for this. Um, 
Okay. So let's start it again. Once again, it's a it's a two it's a two x vi video, but uh, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and and you're done basically. Okay. So you have to choose what is the, the, the environment template that you want. You can't see that. I'm, I'm sorry. But there is written Kettle, Kubernetes, Mesos, Swarm, and Windows. There is also an experimental um, Windows container orchestration engine that you can uh, create. So you add the environment. You put whatever you want over there, the name, the description. You select here the different container environments. In our case, we will select Kubernetes. You then say that your user is a user of that environment, and and that's done. So now we go to Kubernetes. We have to set up Kubernetes. He will do that for us, and again, he will ask for at least one node to be in the cluster. So I, I repeat the same procedure with um, uh, with another node, of course, and uh, I will add. This way, this node to this new cluster, uh, so that Kubernetes can be actually installed. Yes. Once again, I deploy the agent. In this case, they are specific for for Kubernetes, and that's it. You will see all the all the uh, services that will be started for you, and really in 10, 15 minutes, Kubernetes is working. After it is done you can you maybe want to access the the dashboard the famous kubernetes dashboard if you do it straight away like here you get it's not ready it's not ready yet you have to wait some additional 5 10 minutes and then you come back there and, and everything is working so here you see the default kettle and kubernetes with its nodes one node for kubernetes we go back to the dashboard and see the Kubernetes dashboard, and then with everything working on it. So, as you've seen, it's, it's very it's very fast and convenient. Hmm? Okay, what's let's now arrive, drive to conclusions. What's the takeaway of this talk? We have said that containers are a complement to existing IT infrastructure technologies. Virtual machines deliver compute resources. Containers aid application deployment. Containers is a continuation of the do more with less trend. So better and better utilization of resources. Standards are under development. The tool set is new. So we have to take this into account. OpenStack is doing a lot of efforts to uh, make these tools mature. Container orchestration engine on OpenStack can add flexibility so that in one only one only place you can deal with virtual machines, containers, and bare metal, whatever you want. And then Magnum is the official container as a service project for OpenStack, and it is very good for operators, even if it is not yet common in public cloud, at least, you know, the public cloud that um, we use over here in Europe. Um, but container orchestration engine can be run directly on a public cloud tenant. And using Rancher, that's uh, quite easy and straight away. OK, so if you have some questions, I leave here the links to our company web page and to uh, the Rancher container orchestration engine documentation. More documentation if you leave your email here. And uh, I remember you, the two um, um, talks of the, of the afternoon. One is a continuation of this day. Eh? You will see containers running, actually running on Kubernetes. And the other one is about Kubernetes and load balancing. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>